Welcome to the Socrato TV. The political landscape in Kenya seems to be shifting. And the shift is towards the younger generation. Yesterday, the member of parliament, Embakasi East Babuino, declared himself as the new opposition leader since Raila Amolo Odinga has decided to join hands with Dr. William Samuel Ruto. Yeah, actually, from today henceforth, I'm the chief opposition leader because there are so many jokes doing rounds. There are so many people who are in the opposition, who are now in bed with the government. My interest is to fight for Kenyans. It pains me, it pains me to see a person who was a fellow member of parliament joining government. And it pains me to look back in Soweto slums, Kibra slums, to look back in central region, Nyanza coast and everywhere else, to see that child who has been sent away because he lacks only 5,000 to pay for the schooling in a secondary school. Sent because of 5,000. I'm so pained to see that child who's stuck in hospital cannot be treated because they lack money. Is this a new beginning for Kenya? Are we having a new alternative that we may follow? Contrary to the old generation politicians that we have been having. In this video today, I want us to critically assess this situation so that at the end, we will have a deeper understanding of what this announcement from Babawino and his group is all about. Our fellow citizens, let me once more start by expressing uh, my solidarity with the Kenyan youth and families who have lost their lives, sustained injuries, been abducted, or whose loved ones are still missing to date following the protests by the young people of Kenya who have been calling for good governance of their country. We are making this address in response to the many phone calls, text messages, social media APRO, and direct requests to us by distressed Kenyans who feel the political class has abandoned them after the recent constitution of a new cabinet by President Ruto. In this new formation of Babu Owino, Wamuchomba, and other members of parliament from other regions, they argue that the current political landscape, especially the top leadership, that is from the presidency, has ignored the concerns and the cries of the people. And from what they say, they argue that they have been sent by the Gen Z's and the millennials to go and represent their concerns. And if their concerns will not be listened to, then they will have to actually go back to the streets. The young people are, are asking you to show them the practical steps you are taking to create jobs in Kenya to pull them out of this high unemployment. Mr. President, it is a matter of just a few months and another finance bill 2025 will be facing Kenyans again. The young people of Kenya are worried that on March 2025 we'll find them with no change at all and they will be forced to they'll be forced back to the streets to protest poor governance and poor policies and to reject the finance bill <coughs> 2025. As you have seen, this new formation, which calls itself Team Ground, argues that they are ready to take the mantle and represent the concerns of the people. And their rallying call, or the main group they argue that they are to represent, are the Gen Z's who have been protesting recently and the millennials. Our fellow citizens, let me once more start by expressing uh, uh, my solidarity with the Kenyan youth and families who have lost their lives, sustained injuries, been abducted, or whose loved ones are still missing to date following the protests by the young people of Kenya who have been calling for good governance of their country. 
We are making this address in response to the many phone calls, text messages, social media APRO, and direct requests to us by distressed Kenyans who feel the political class has abandoned them after the recent constitution of a new cabinet by President Ruto. Now, my, my question would be, what does this new formation actually, uh, uh, what is motivating this new formation? And are they really being realistic that the concerns of the people, that is the Gen Z's and the millennials, are what are driving them actually uh, to voice uh, or to come up with this new formation? And is this new grouping in any way different from what you have been witnessing in Kenya? Or are they just a grouping of opportunistic politicians who have seen an opportunity or a vacuum in the opposition and they have decided to fill it? Today in this video, I want us to critically look into this so as, so as actually to come up with a conclusive uh, conclusive understanding of what this is. But before we start, I am requesting all those who are new to our channel, please just take one second and hit the subscribe button so that we can continue creating a bigger family of the Socrato TV. First of all, I would like us to start with looking at the opposition. Indeed, there appears to be a vacuum in the opposition leadership in the sense that as much as we have people calling themselves as the opposition leaders, they have not been vocal enough or they have not come out to really do what the opposition is supposed to do. And that is actually checking the government. Raila Amolo Odinga is neither, you know, is... is how do I put it even? I'm very confused. He says he's in opposition. He says he's not in opposition. Kalonzo Msioka, despite being in opposition, he does not show that energy, that charisma to actually agitate the issues of or concerns of Kenyans as an opposition leader would do. For a person like uh, Eugene Malwa is also there, but not very vocal enough. Mata Karua, his influence is not, not that much. Maybe within the region of Mount Kenya. So you can clearly see that there is a vacuum and this leadership that is now being led by Babowino and Wamuchomba seems like they have seen as an opportunity to take advantage of it like any other politician would do so as to fill that vacuum. You know, in leadership, there is no possibility of a vacuum and any vacuum that may appear here uh, or may want to create itself will always be filled. So will Babu Owino and Wamuchomba really uh, fill this vacuum? Another thing I see here is that the opposition leaders or those who are in opposition, for instance, Kalonzo Msioka, are a bit complacent in the sense that they are not uh, really hardliners. They are easy to be convinced. Just yesterday, we saw Kalonzo Msioka saying that he's ready to negotiate with Raila Amolo Odinga. A person who has been very rigid the other day saying that Raila Amolo Odinga did very wrong to join the government and they were not really sanctioning or they had not supported his uh, relationship with Dr. William Samuel Ruto. So when did he again change his mind to start saying that uh, he can now engage Raila Amolo Odinga, what are, are they really engaging on? Raila Amolo Odinga is already in government. He has sent his people. And if Kalonzo Msioka indeed, if he had wanted to engage, maybe he would also have sent his people to cabinet. For now, he is being looked as a very complacent individual who has no uh, that uh, push or that charisma to actually lead the people uh, to a new government that is to topple President William Samuel Ruto in the from the government in the year 2027, so that we can have a new uh, a new president. I also see that Babu Owino and these groupings, as you can clearly see, it, it is made up of 
new faces. I don't mean that new politicians, but new faces in the sense that they have no f some family backing about their politics. And most of them entered the politics maybe if it's more years, maybe 15 years ago. People like Relo, Molodinga, Kalonzo, uh, who else? Ruto, were politicians from a very long period of time. So these new groupings are here to destabilize or to actually startle the status quo. The status quo that has been controlled by Kenyatas and Odingas for quite some period of time, and even Moise. And President William Samoeto, as the current president of uh, the Republic of Kenya, is a child or is a product of Moi. So we are currently being controlled by these three families, Odinga, Moi, and Kenyatta. So this new grouping, since they have not any political families that are backing them, I think they are more of wanting to disrupt the status quo and bring some radical changes. I can assure you that if a person like Babu Owino or Wamuchomba gets into power, he has no any baggage of uh, maybe uh, their family having friendship, for example, like uh, Oginga Odinga and Kenyatta, they have no any kind of just uh, baggage they, which will hold them to actualize what people want. They will only do that which they have promised. So from that uh, perspective, I can actually give them some credit or actually uh, not doubt if their really intention will be okay, uh, because uh, they have not that baggage. And that is uh, my emphasis of the fact that they may be here to actually disrupt uh, uh, the status quo. Now, in the disruption of the status quo, of course, the vacuum of power that has been left will also be filled. Another thing that I have also noted, or I would like to address here is, having listened to the concern of this so-called team ground, I think to some extent, they have legitimate concerns. Their concerns make sense. Indeed, President William Samuel Ruto has failed to work for the people. President William Samuel Ruto, even as we are currently speaking, he's moving throughout the country, campaigning on what he refers to as development agendas. This has even led to mockery. People are mocking him. They are mocking his government. They are saying that uh, he's busy uh, actually taking selfies, taking photos to post to show that he's working when he should be in his office working. The protest of the Gen Z that lasted for about two months ended up really dissolution, dissolving the, the cabinet, but the new cabinet that was actually constituted did not really represent the aspiration of the Gen Zs. We saw all the politicians still being returned back to the cabinet. The Gen Z's had really said that no any no cabinet sector who was previously in the cabinet should be returned back. But we saw them coming back. We saw people like Kipchuma Murukomen, who Gen Z's had even identified specifically that they did not want him. In fact, it was uh, actually uh, like a slap in the face of the Gen Z's when he was put in the Ministry of Youth and Sports, the ministry where the Gen Z's are. So from that perspective, indeed, you can say that they have that concern and their concern of saying that the current government is not working for the people is valid. But the question I would like to ask, how sure are we that they will not be the same as the previous regime have been? How sure are they we that they will not be like Dr. William Samuel Ruto? I think that is where we need to concentrate our effort. We need not just to dismiss them or embrace them, but critically assess if these in, are indeed the people who will be representing our concerns at Kenyans. Now, my question would be this. From your own understanding, from how you've been seeing the political landscape in Kenya, from how you've been observing people like Babuino, people like Kwamchomba, people like uh, Ledamo Lekina because he's also part of that, uh, people uh, like uh, we have Mwana, among others, do you think that these people can actually uh, live up to the aspiration of Kenyans? Do you think that these people are really accountable leaders? I need us to be very intentional and actually realistic here. 
And by being intentional and realistic may even mean going to the extent of looking at their history. How have these people been working? How has Babuino been working in Nebakasi East where he's a member of parliament? How has been uh, how has uh, Gadon Wamchoma been working? What are their ideals? What do they believe in? What bills have they passed in parliament? What bills have they opposed? What is their history, their political history? What are the other things that they have done in the past which may also affect our uh, actually our uh, decisions in either selecting them or not? Was their past action a mistake that can be corrected or forgiven? Or is this something that cannot be forgiven and therefore we cannot really consider them? I mean, we need to be very intentional and critical here. Now, assuming that maybe we have some issues with them, how can we give them an opportunity to lead us and at the same time give them a framework within which they, they will work so as to prevent them from being what the other politicians have been? Like in the Chinese uh, country, we have this party called, uh, how, how, what's, what's their party? The Communist Party. The Communist Party operates as a party and therefore we have no any individual, one up, a, 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 a person who is a king or a strong person like in Kenya we have ODM, Raila, or Ruto, or UDM. We have a large group of people who make decisions whereby if you fail to adhere to the decisions that are on the table then you, you will just be removed. What if we give them an opportunity then we tell them to come up with a party that has a structure like the Communist Party of China? whereby an individual own decision is not what runs the party, but the collective, and this collective comes from the people. The only difference that we may have uh, with China is that in China it's more of a dictatorial regime, but in Kenya here, we only copy the aspect of having the collective views of the party to run the party. Maybe a good example would be in South Africa where we have parties like ANC, where an individual is not the party and the party is not an individual. The party is about a collective. I think, for me, as in my opinion, I think if we have, if they come up with a party of such nature, I will support them. And for the reasons that one, at least they are new people, they are new faces. As much as they have been politics, they have no, uh, what we call a, uh, political backings that are pushing them for some kind of interest. I can simply assume that they are on their own. Secondly, they need to form a party, a new party, that will run in a very different way than what we are experiencing currently. The current parties like ODM, UDA, Kanu and whatever are only political vehicles that are used to lead one to political office. They are not run by any a particular ideology. Maybe I may forgive ODM for, to some degree because it has, to some extent, through its fight, it has brought reforms, uh, things like the new constitution, it fought for multi-party democracy. But UDA, what does it stand for? Nothing. Nothing, totally nothing. I don't know what you think about this. Please feel free to show opinion at the comment box. Until we meet again, bye-bye.